Well, good to see both these jerseys. The traditional white of England. Of course, they started the series as Great Britain. have now split up with Wales and Scotland. And, of course, the New Zealand all-black jersey. Finalists last week looking to go one better this week. It didn't quite come off, but they have a good reputation here in Vancouver. Those English boys will want to upset the party. Absolutely. I mean, New Zealand, they'll be so disappointed with that defeat to Australia. I think maybe an impact of not having played on the World Series for so long. You can do it one weekend, but backing it, backing it again the next weekend is so, so tough. But they'll have a point to prove here, show that that was a minor blip. Uh, and a lot of these players who are coming, who yeah, have been coming you? off the bench, they're now yeah. starting for England. Making it through to the Cup quarterfinals was a bit of a victory for this young team, but they'll want to go one better, and this is their first opportunity for many of them to play against the New Zealand All Black Sevens. Cisco Lopez in the middle, the American referee. England kicking off to the left. Fifth place semi final. Holding. Let go. Who will join the Blitz Box to compete for fifth here in Vancouver? Scrum taken. Not releasing. I know the New Zealanders weren't too very happy with a few of the calls in the quarterfinal. For my money, not maybe the reason they lost the match, but obviously have huge impact and momentum. Absolutely. I mean, it's such a hard job refereeing, and there are these fine margins, so Coach, it, yes, it's not no, that often you walk off the pitch to not looking at one or two fine. decisions, but usually the refs do a great job of keeping Set. up with play and getting the decisions space. for the most part right. Space for the scrum half, so England off and running. A little bit too slow was the support. Penalty to New Zealand. Drats off and gone. Well, Clark Legal, I will Hi. have analyzed very quickly that quarterfinal match with Australia and then set the game plan in place to take on England. Good width. Caleb Tangutau has been exceptional in this tournament. Bit of the youth movement is taking over the sevens for New Zealand. Of course, Moses Leo out. He has been an incredible force. Try scoring machine for New Zealand, but he is injured, so he won't be called upon on the bench. Nashu also starts on the bench, and I wonder how his fitness is. And there he goes through the middle. He's going to use his mate, Leroy Carter. The youngsters linking up. Great rugby there for New Zealand. Fantastic play for New Zealand. It comes from this rap play. They love to do this. Give the ball out in a simple pass. We see there, there's the physicality that some of these New Zealand players can bring. Good tackle from the English. Um, but the rap play, it changes the point of the attack. It forces the defense to slide across. And that's what opens up these gaps on the inside that New Zealand were able to exploit. Carter, the Taronga man, 23 years of age. Got a nice one here in Vancouver. Kurt Baker getting the start here, the veteran. One of those calls at the end of the match. A little bit unbelievable for him. He's nudged it long and beautifully weighted. He'll just force the English to start from well on their own end. Yeah, it's a fantastic kick from Kurt Baker. I mean, yeah, that's an that's incredibly difficult kick to pull off. It's also not one you practice quite as much as the others. So he's executed that well. And New Zealand, they have a really good defensive line out. Uh, one of the teams were able to compete really really well so force england deep in their own 22 to execute and these young english players under pressure baker not necessarily part of that youth movement at 33 years of age yeah it's okay but incredible servant nonetheless hey mark Here. 37 yeah, world series events to yeah. his name fierce competitor but england with possession again inside their own 22 there's the one-hander for some reason, Dylan Collier has jumped on it. He's captaining today in this match. What a pass out wide. Get up, Dangy Tao. Resumes normal service. New Zealand's second try. Comes from the turnover in the line out, which came from the kickoff. I mean, New Zealand, I'd say, didn't even pressure that. I mean, that's a basic error from England. Like, when you've got no one jumping against you, there's no excuse for not taking that cleanly, and then it's just all too easy. The miss pass, Tangi Tao goes in the corner, um, and New Zealand, really simple. What a great pass from Brady Rush, recognizing the English had taken the middle away. Wonderful, eh? 
Absolutely. I mean, that's good recognition, especially from a young guy who hasn't had too many appearances on this circuit. To be able to, while you're kind of running at the line, you're spotting the defense, you're reading what they're doing, uh, and firing a perfect miss pass. It was really well done from Brady Rush, uh, finding the man Tangatau in space. 19 years of age. What a bad place to be when you're 19, lighting it up on the HSBC World Series. Again, the kick goes long. And again, wonderful gain of territory, forcing the English right back. They didn't get out last time. Let's see what happens yep. this time. Yeah, Baker seemingly saying, hey, if you're not going to defend there, that's where I'll put it. And so now New Zealand again gets to use their defensive line out. They go long and secure possession. Good throw. Will Homer at the bottom of that pileup. Now they get it away. Side entry. Side entry is the call. Quick tap. Baker. Just inching their way towards the line. Late drop for Vi. He keeps it alive. And again, a beautifully weighted looping pass. This time, Brady Rush is the recipient. He scores. Really simple play from New Zealand. It's not that common in sevens anymore to kind of play the territory game. It used to be quite a common tactic on kickoffs to kick deep and try and pin them with your defense. Attacks now have gone so good that possession is seen as more valuable than that territory. But New Zealand's showing that you can put pressure with your defense, force mistakes, and then they're just lining up in these wide channels. Kurt Baker with a nice pass to find the man in space, but really easy once they're getting in these attacking opportunities to get the try. I know we spent a lot of time talking about it, but seeing that famous number two black jersey scoring tries, obviously his father wore it. Tim Mickelson offered it up. The man has put 15 years of his own service into that jersey, and that speaks to the pride of the New Zealand Sevens group. And now Brady Rush getting his chance on the World Series. Baker, he's gone right, he's gone left, he's gone now, he's gone right short. This one's a little bit overcooked. Yeah, I think relying on his man to get in the way, but just doesn't get that one quite right. I mean, they, the deep kick was working well. I did, England didn't put anyone back there. and might have gone there again. Um, but now it gives England a chance. The first half has not gone the way they'd have wanted, but these are young players with lots of th enthusiasm, lots of pride in what they're being able to do. So now it's on them. What can they create at the end of this first half? No pressure, but I think if you want to get to that Coach. fifth place final and extend the opportunity to see the great Dan Fine. Norton, on the series, England have to do something here at the end of this first half. They're down 17-0. Let's see what evolves. All three men lined up behind the scrum. Bobbled momentarily by Coulson. The Hooters sounds. Browning coming around the corner. Does his job. Takes it wide. Doesn't go to hand, and so that'll put the... Emphasis back on New Zealand, able to take away that space. New Zealand been really well connected in defense. A couple of lapses against Australia in their quarterfinal, and it looks like it's been addressed. Again, poor skills from the English. You can't play the game when the ball goes behind you. Browning's getting pummeled four Englishmen in that ruck. Again, hard to create an advantage when that's the case. New Zealand had something of a sweeper in Tangitao, but he's had to come up and deal with this. Holding. And Tangitao's won the penalty. Hey, just let him get up. Alex Davis turned over. So we're in the red numbers, and it's still New Zealand in the attack. Ball goes to Trails Joats. Mano a Mano there. He wins it and keeps his feet. Big Dylan Collier. With the captain's armband on for this match. Baker's had enough. In and the out. <laughs> Crucial drive for Kurt Baker at the half. Looked like a very tired two thumbs up there from Baker, but yeah, deciding enough was enough. Uh, time to end the half. And again, another good try from New Zealand. England just going backwards and backwards. Too many loose passes, like. Un in unnecessary situations, unforced errors, stunting any chance of them getting any momentum in their attack. Baker, two thumbs up. Maybe a bit of a salute to uh, the Samoan game yesterday when he was taunted by one of the youngsters. 
And that'll do it for halftime. It's all New Zealand at the moment. 24 points to nil over England. Bit of a show against England. Kickoffs have been a big part of that onslaught. This time England secure the ball through Max Clemenson. Clemenson off the base. It's been a little bit too much of this, quite deep. There's a shorter line offered by Alex Davis. The experienced man realized they need to mix things up a little bit. And again, a mistake from England. Unfortunate there, just when they were starting to get some momentum. Comes off. Well, there's a bit of a subplot to this match. England may not get the result, but that man is ending his service if they don't get the win here. 10, seven, Incredible servant, iconic player who's gone from professionalism to the Olympic Games. Started in Wellington in 2009, and um, you know you can't have a career like that with the tries he scored without support. His wife Samantha, 14 years she's tolerated his traveling Crouch. the world, and his father Aubrey as well been attended some events. So uh, great Fine. moment for him. What a wonderful servant. He's top of the tries by a long way. And in the words of Rob Bickerman, our colleague. He's been a beacon for the England Sevens team. Congratulations, Dan Norton. Let's hope you can get your hands on the ball one more time here. Well, in many ways, the future, I would say, Caleb Tangitao putting on his display here. Will he have that many tries one day? He's got a smile on his face. Yeah, two back tries in this match. Look at the joy in the man. I think there's a little bit of respect there to know that he can go around the great man. These players are students of the game, especially the Kiwis. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, for everyone playing in the World Series, Dan Norton is an absolute legend, and Tangi Tao just getting the better of him there. Not the way Norton would have wanted to come on and start his final game, but still plenty of time for him to make an opportunity, and he doesn't need much time at all. Tangi Tao. So impressive. Got his debut in just in Singapore, and he's uh, looking very comfortable out here. Kick goes deep again, in fact, too deep. So, Seppi's maneuver for England, they've been choosing the scrum. Yeah, and weren't able to exploit it last time. We'll see if they go for that. Scrum. Going to go for that same option. They've been stacking players behind the scrum and then wheeling them all Thumbs out up. to the right where they've had Norton previously. Now we've got Norton on the left. I'd love to see them isolate him in space, try and commit some of the New Zealand defenders to the far side uh, so that they can Come use on. him against in a one-on-one -on -one situation, which is what we want to see. Coach! So from that wide shot, there he is. Dan is way off to the right. Fine. It's, it's Norton watch right now. We all want something Set. for him. New Zealand steal the head. They're ruining the party here. Off they go. Rush pulls back wisely and says we're going to regroup. Well, this is the clinical phase play and offloading game that New Zealand do so well. This what got them to the final last week. Say they just fell short against the Fijian side. Ben Golling's first victory with that team. Good give and go. High stepping down the sideline. Homer comes across. Oh, both Englishmen come across. In the end, it's okay, look. <laughs> the Opa. Fantastic interplay. Bamboozled the English defense. Rokolasoa getting the final touch to touch it down. Some really nice offloads. Doing Rush doing well. Nashu doing well here. Shrugging off defenders, carrying them with him. Look at that fight. You can see how just how much he's putting into that. And the English defenders, maybe Mbavadra, if he goes in there, he has to cover the ball. Not able to do so. Uh, gets it free, and Rokolasoa gets in for the try. New Zealand pulling out on this right-hand side. It was an interesting thing. Didn't really see that for much from them in years past, but this year it's been more of a theme where they're keeping the ball alive, not looking to take much contact when they don't need to, and finding the space out wide. Well, Tony Nashu knew he was going to take a big hit there when he opened up to offload, but the scoreboard keeps ticking over. Van Norton gets his hands on it. Off to Afim Vadra. Tackle! Still on his feet. Now the tackle's complete. Oh, the short line was offered up. Norton no cho hands. chose not to use 
Jamie Varden. Vadra pulls it deep. Running out of space. Has to chuck it in field. Did Toby Baldwin. And it's picked off. There's a little bit of old school sevens here. They're backing up. On his toes. A little time for McGarvey Black has been brought on the side this week. Show what he can do. Again, New Zealand in no hurry in many ways. Up 34 points to nil. They know they'll live to fight on in the fifth place final. They'll be up against the South Africans. Or about really taking that time in no rush, as you said. New Zealand know this game's in hand. Uh, it's just sitting back. England's sitting off them. So it's a bit of a stalemate as each team decides who's going to initiate that contact. New Zealand with the mistake. And now here we go. Right hand scrum for England. Looks like they're going to put the ball in from that far side. So ask their hooker, especially after the last one was turned well, over. Um, we'll have to see whether that's square. a good decision. Yeah. But Dan Norton in space against Regan Ware. Coach. I'd love to see them get the ball in his hands early and give him a go to attack Fine. Regan Ware one on one. Well, you know the Kiwis don't want to Set. give him his big moment. It's North have it in the tank. Have to do a little bit more than that. There we go. Outside, inside. They work short side. Oh, and it's bobbled. Offside. By Jamie Barton. But they'll have another chance. Offside. Scrum option. And they're going to take the scrum. Might be time to change that tactic. It's not really paying off. No, I mean, I think it's... You're passing, you're just chain passing the ball. Norton gets his hand, and two or three New Zealand defenders are shifting onto him in midfield. And interesting, they've got him behind the scrum here. Um, a, bit, a bit like playing defense against Michael Jordan. You don't want to be that guy on the poster when Norton scores a, a famous try. They want to take the space away. Absolutely. So I want to get one of these midfield Fine. runners running hard at the line, sitting the New Zealand defense back so that when Norton does get the ball, he's got a more of a one on one rather than that three on one. England still in attack. Not a lot of room to work with, but finally some go forward for England through Homer. And Jamie Varden. They flip it out wide. He steps once. He can't step twice. And it is Regan Ware that brings him down. The, hiss, the hooters sounded. There's space out wide. Will Homer's going to go in the corner and take the goose egg off the board. And a more competitive second half for the English there. Stuck in it a lot more. New Zealand maybe taking their foot off the gas, but getting the try what? right at the end. Outside the uh, and if that is the end for Dan Norton, what a career it has been. In the corner, Homer. But really, the story here is England have gone down to New Zealand. Comprehensive victory for New Zealand. 34 points to five. But the story is about that man and a 14-year career a wonderful servant to the series and a guy you played against and just a final word for you i mean every time you came up against dan norton in, in within that england team you had to be so worried about him because he could do something out of absolutely nothing so just a guy i have so much respect for his work ethic what he could do on the pitch and yeah made me silly made me look silly way too many times to count well the highest try score ever and respect being shown by the new zealand